There we go. There we go. It is time for Bible study. I know y'all like, where Fred at? It feels so weird doing this without Fred. But if you have followed the ministry, then you understand that we are opening up UCI. We are opening up on Easter Sunday, Unity Charlotte International for you all over the world. And so you know what my husband is doing? He is working. That's right. He, Carlos, Corey, a bunch of men, contractors, they're coming together and they're working on a building. It is a strong foundation. We are all part of the army of the Lord. And so, while I am holding down the fort, while your senior pastor, Apostle Fred D. Gooden III, is working, I'm going to hold it down because that's what a good wife does. In fact, it's good to see you all. Come on, y'all. I need you to click. I need you to tag. And I need you to share because I am going somewhere. Good afternoon. I am so glad that you guys are here with us. I need you guys to do me a favor. I need you to click again. I need you to tag again. I need you to share again because it is time for Bible study for UCI. I am so good to see you. Good evening, Jamaica. Shelly Ann Dixon, how are you? Good evening, Minister Stefanetta. How are you? Good evening, Harriet Hun. It's good to see you. Good evening, Gloria. Good evening. Good evening, Golda. Good evening. Click, tag, and share. We're going somewhere. Tierra, it's good to see you. Let's go. It is time for Bible study. Just saw my girl Danielle going up the timeline. She said, you are the queen to be. God bless you. I want you guys to get ready because this is what it is. It is time for Bible study. Again, I'm going to tell you that my husband is in fact holding down the fort. It is such an amazing thing to have a husband that is a builder. And so what he is doing, he is doing what he does as a contractor. He's building. Y'all get ready to see something so beautiful at Unity Charlotte International. On Easter Sunday will be our first service. Friday will be the ribbon cutting. Will you have a meet and greet? You're going to come and have some hors d'oeuvre with us. And we're going to pray. On this, that Saturday, my girl, Miranda Curtis, will be coming with a concert. And then on Easter Sunday, oh, you wait to see who's going to be our guest speaker. We're going to have a high time in the Lord. So come on out. I am so honored to see you all. I am so honored to hold down the fort. Shakira Campbell, I miss seeing you. I miss my husband, y'all. But he's got to do the work. Somebody's got to do it. And so I am honored that he is doing that. This is going to be controversial right now. It is. It's going to be controversial because I am going to address that age-old question, concern, comment that everybody has put in my inbox. That people, Rufus, put in the comment section. Are women allowed to preach the gospel? Are women allowed to teach? Are women allowed to minister? Are women allowed to be used by God? Are women allowed to run? Come on here. Are women allowed to carry the torch? Are women allowed to preach the gospel? Are women allowed to stand firm on the foundation in which they have been made free? Are women allowed to wear the cloth? Are women allowed to speak in public? Are women allowed? That's right. Someone said, get ready, 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 get ready. Are women allowed to preach the gospel? Here we go. I want you to go with me really quickly to the book of Timothy. That controversial book that everybody attacks us who are women. You, yeah, you, not just me. That are carrying the gospel. That's right. That's right. Let's go. 1 Timothy 2 and 12. Can someone put that up? 1 Timothy 2 and 12. Put it up. Repetition is the mother of learning, so that's why I'm saying it. Melissa said, I stand with you. Are women allowed to carry the gospel? 
Why is it right now? Someone said this is going to be good. Why is it that right now, in 2021, people still have a problem with this? Let's go. It is amazing because what I did is I got the permission from my husband to speak about this subject. But do you know that there are people, even in your church, that have a problem with this? All right, let's address it. Here we go. I want to address this, and so here we go. 1 Timothy 2 and 12, it says this. This is the controversy. I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume the authority over a man. Mm, that's deep. She must be quiet. Really? Right then and there, they just lost me. She must be quiet. For Adam was formed from Eve. And Adam was not the one deceived. I'm reading the NIV. It was the woman who was deceived. And she became sin, so they say. But women will be saved through childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with, hmm, with, I'm, 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 I'm just going to use the word proper. I'm, I'm just going to say it that way. Since I've got about 1,100 people who are watching me right now, you have to understand that. This is called uh, International Women's Month. And it's, a, it's, it's amazing that Fred is at the church working and I'm doing this right here. But everyone is going to get a dime on this. I can guarantee you that. It's a controversial situation because many times there are some people who are religious that have a problem with women being pastors. They have a problem with a woman bearing the gospel. But what they forgot to understand is that the gospel is simply good news. The gospel is, someone just tagged someone, Gene Bates, listen to this. The gospel means that someone has to bear the good news. But a lot of people read that specific passage, but they forget why it was written. Since we're all here, I've got to do something so everyone could understand the word of God. This man, Paul, was Saul at one point. Now, I'm going to break this down and I'm going to teach it to you for a minute because I don't really care for religion. I don't care for religion because what religion does, it'll give you so many rules until you don't know what to do. It'll give you so many revelations and you don't even understand what you have the complete understanding of. But that's not the understanding of our father at all. The Bible said, you so crazy, Keisha Tucker. The Bible says that Paul was a man that wrote certain letters. And so here we're going to speak about the book of Galatians in Romans. You have to understand that Paul was underneath the auspice of his own intellect. He was a very intellectual man until, say until. Folks who are religious are religious until revelation hits them. And then they say, oops, I could have had a V8. The Bible says that before there was the Apostle Paul, he was considered Saul, which simply means that he really did not have the full knowledge of who he was. The Bible says that he was going along and he was on his way and getting letters to persecute those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and crucified. The Bible said that this man named Ananias was with him until he became knowledgeable of who he was from the foundation of the earth. Now I'm going somewhere. The Bible simply says that he was walking alone in his own mind doing what he thought was right. So here we go with this man begin to write these passages of letters in Galatians and even in Romans. The Bible says that when he came to the full knowledge of who he was, he had to get the full knowledge that God had to teach him something. He had to teach him something because he really didn't know any better. Watch this. The Bible says that even God himself changed his name to Paul because he had to give him full revelation knowledge of who he thought he was in his mind. 
which lets me know that there was a level of him that was still getting an understanding concerning this new lifestyle. Most of you have to understand that religious people, someone said, ooh, preach it right here. Most people have to understand that people who are religious was like Saul stuck in his ways. We're going somewhere. He was stuck in his ways because he yet had not come to the full knowledge of who God was. So what God said is what I've got to do. I've got to give you teachers and I've got to give you people to help you understand what you've been persecuting all along. So here we go. The Lord said that I'm going to give you Ananias. He even gave him a couple to help him understand who he was. Watch this. Priscilla and Aquila, they associated themselves with him because they had to give him knowledge because he was still learning. We get that understanding? Okay. So I'm setting it up to you so you could understand why I've got to read this to you. Because now he, he is, and he is now saying, women are not to be spoken. They're supposed to be silent. If they want to speak, go to their husbands. Understand that we were underneath that law. So what religion does because of control and religious people, they try to keep you there. Just like Saul, they keep you underneath this law that God himself died. To banish. You got it? So now here we are. So you understand what everybody, someone you teach your pastor. So what everybody that says, women are not to preach. Women are not supposed to be pastors. Women are supposed, they're trying to keep you bound by a traditional law that Christ himself became. Even the word of God says, curse is the man that hangs on a tree because he became that curse that we might be free. You get it now? I'm dropping bars, but part of a prophet is she's very poetic or he's very poetic. Watch this. And so now when people tell you that you can't do it, go to them and say, I am no longer bound by that law. What law? The law that your tradition is trying to stick me in? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. It's a recommendation. So I'm going to read this to you because I want you to get the full knowledge of what the word of God said concerning that recommendation, concerning that law, concerning that. So I'm going to read Galatians 3. So now that you got the word of God that I gave you in 1 Timothy 2 and 12, let me bring you to when all of that went away. Here we go. And because of time, what I'm going to do, I'm going to let it be audibly played for you so you can get the complete understanding of where we're going. Stay here. It's going to make sense. Watch this. Here we go. Galatians 3. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish? After beginning by means of the Spirit, are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Have you experienced so much in vain, if it really was in vain? So again I ask, does God give you his spirit and work miracles among you by the works of the law, or by your believing what you heard? So also Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then, that those who have faith are children of Abraham. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. As it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God, because the righteous will live by faith. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, it says, the person who does these things will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus, 
so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Brothers and sisters, let me take an example from everyday life. Just as no one can set aside or add to a human covenant that has been duly established, so it is in this case. The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. Scripture does not say, and to seeds, meaning many people, but, and to your seed, meaning one person, who is Christ. What I mean is this, the law, introduced 430 years later, does not set aside the covenant previously established by God, and thus do away with the promise. For if the inheritance depends on the law, then it no longer depends on the promise. But God, in his grace, gave it to Abraham through a promise. Why then was the law given at all? It was added because of transgressions until the seed to whom the promise referred had come. The law was given through angels and entrusted to a mediator. A mediator, however, implies more than one party, but God is one. Is the law therefore opposed to the promises of God? Absolutely not. For if a law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness would certainly have come by the law. But scripture has locked up everything under the control of sin, so that what was promised being given through faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. So the law was our guardian until Christ came that we might be justified by faith. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There's neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, do you get it now? So when you have people that tell you that women cannot preach, you must understand that the word of the Lord said that Jesus came and when he came, the law, that old thing that they was trying to get you bound by, it was relinquished. The Bible says that even Paul himself, who absolutely wrote this, he wrote this in Galatians 3, but he also wrote 1 Timothy 2 and 12, which lets me know that there was a level of him that got the complete understanding that I know that I'm learning. But there is something bigger than what I believe. That's when the Lord Jesus Christ had to help him understand or even retract that. By God saying, I came. There's no longer Jew. There's no Gentile. There's no black. There's no white. There is no man. There's no woman. He said, all. Which means that there is a level deeper than what you even thought, Paul. So whenever you have someone and they tell you that women can't preach, what they're trying to do, someone said, do you get it now? Yeah, you get it now. What you need to tell them is, hold on, take them to the word of God. Take them to Galatians where the word of the Lord said, look, I'm relinquishing all of that. I've got to bring something to your attention because most of you really don't understand that there is something greater that a lot of people don't know how to respond to that. It's so simple, but... A lot of you miss it. You miss it because, unfortunately, maybe religion didn't teach you the right way. So here's the crazy lady in the car with a wonderful, hus well, wonderful husband. The Bible said that the greatest among you is what? I'm going to let y'all answer that. The greatest among you is what? I'm waiting for y'all to respond because I'm going to read your, your comment. Thank you for that. The greatest among you is the what? I'm going to wait. Michelle, pay attention because I need the first person that says it. I need them to be rewarded. The greatest among you is the what? I'm waiting for you to respond. What did he say? 
Did he say the greatest among you was the what? That's right. The veil was ripped. No one knows what I'm getting ready to answer. The greatest among you is what? We got 1,400 people. Listen to me. Say it now. Thank you. Stephanie Campbell McAllister said it. She said it first. Michelle, get it. Stephanie Campbell McAllister said it first. So let's reward her because Stephanetta and uh, Lauren A. And it was all under her. The Bible says the greatest among you is the servant. It did not say the man. It did not say the woman. It did not say the elder. It did not say the apostle. It did not say anything concerning the fivefold ministry. You know, the evangelist, the prophet, the teacher, the preacher, you know that. It says the servant, which means no matter who you are, if you have the spirit of servitude, the Lord calls you great. It calls you great, which means there's a level of you that has to understand that women serve every day. Men serve every day. You could be a child and be a servant and God calls you great. So a man can't do it alone. That's, that's just, that's what I'm saying. You can't do it without her. You cannot do this thing called gospel without us. You can't. I, I, I want to show you something because uh, I want you to go to Romans 16. I'm, I'm going to show you something. The word of the Lord said that Paul stated this in Galatians 28. But I want you to know that he also stated in 1 Timothy 2 and 12, where women ought to suffer, watch this, women are supposed to be silent. That she is supposed to be silent and you forbid her not to teach. This is what he's, he said this. He said this. 1 Timothy 2 and 12, it says, but I suffer no woman to teach. Watch this. Or absurd or go over her authority. For the man is her authority and she is to be silent. I've never seen so many people shove this down a woman's throat in ministry. And it's wrong. And I'm going to tell you that. You can get in my inbox. You can say whatever you want to. You need to wake up because you're wrong. Yes, Paul wrote it. But he also wrote Galatians 3 and 28, which I just read you. Which means there was a level of him that had to retract what he thought because he came into the full knowledge. He came into the full knowledge because it's right here. It's right here. In Romans 16. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you. I'm trying to get you to understand. You religious nuts, please stop attacking women who are teaching good news. Stop it. I want you to go to Romans, go to Romans 16. I am going to blow your mind. I'm going to blow your mind because what you don't understand is Paul did say that. He did. He said, suffer the woman to be, just don't speak it. You ain't go, you can't say nothing. Silence her. This is what he said. But he also retracted that in Galatians. And he says, wait a minute. There's no Jew. There's no Gentile. There's no bound. There's no free. There's no male, no free man. He said, we are all. It lets me know that he was still getting the revelation knowledge. And it's true because he was Saul thinking that he was doing the right thing until. See, that's why you got to, Michelle said, right? That's why you got to be careful when people run and tell you that. Oh, you ain't supposed to preach or you a woman and you ain't supposed to do that. Stop that buffoonery. Because what you're doing is you're trying to tell God what he has the authority to do. And you're not God. Watch this. Go with me to Romans. Because what Paul did is he retracted that. Dang, tell y'all that, right? He retracted that. He did. Go to Romans 16. I'm going to read something to you. And it's going to blow your mind. I want you to tag, share, and invite because we in Bible study. I love you too. Retract that. If you are in any type of ministry at all and there are no women in the pulpit, run. If you're in any type of ministry and they will not give a woman a title, run. Because what they're doing is they're still trying to bound you by a law that Paul himself said, well, they ain't supposed to be silent in the church. Wait, hold on for a minute. I got to retract that. I'm going to show you when Paul retracted that. Go to Romans 16. But because of time, allow me to audibly give this to you because I really want you to get the understanding what Paul was saying. Robert Whitfield said, right, obey God. So Robert is in my corner. Watch this. Paul had to retract that. Why? He retracted that because of experience. He retracted that because he had got a full revelation knowledge 
of what God said it was supposed to be and not the law. Listen, Romans 16, watch this. Watch this. Romans 16. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, Phoebe. a deacon of the church in Centrea. A deacon, Phoebe. I ask you to receive her in the Lord. Receive her in, in the Lord. In a way Lord. worthy of his people. And to give her any help she may need from give you, her for any she help she has needs. been this the benefactor of many people, including me. She's been a benefactor Preach of many Priscilla people, including me. Priscilla and Aquila, me. my co-workers in Christ and Jesus, Aquila, a couple. they risked their lives for me. They Not risked their lives. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. Greet also the church that meets at their house. Greet my dear friend Apennitus, who was the first convert to Christ in the province of Asia. Greet Mary who worked very hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my fellow Jews who have been in prison with me. They are outstanding among the apostles and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampliitis, my dear friend in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ and my dear friend Stachys. Greet Apellus, whose fidelity to Christ has stood the test. Greet those who belong to the household of Aristopolis. Greet Herodian, my fellow Jew. Greet those in the household of Narcissus who are in the Lord. Greet Tryphena and Tryphosa, those women who worked hard in the Lord. Greet my dear friend Persis, another woman who has worked very hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, That's and so his mother, who has been a mother to me too. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Petrobus, Hermas, and the other brothers and sisters with them. Greet Philologus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the Lord's people who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ send a greetings. I urge you, brothers and sisters, to watch out for those who cause divisions and put obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Religion. Keep away from them, for such people are not serving our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the minds of naive people. Everyone has heard about your obedience, so I rejoice because of you. But I want you to be wise about what is good and innocent about what is evil. The God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of our Lord Jesus be with you. Timothy, my co-worker, sends his greetings to you. As do Lucius, Jason, and Saucy Pater, my fellow Jews. I, Tertius, who wrote down this letter, greet you in the Lord. Gaius, whose hospitality I and the whole church here enjoy, sends you his greetings. Erastus, who is the city's director of public works, and our brother Quartus, send you their greetings. Now to him who is able to establish you in accordance with my gospel, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ in keeping with the revelation of the mystery hidden for long ages past, but now revealed and made known through the prophetic writings by the command of the eternal God, so that all the Gentiles might come to the obedience that comes from faith. To the only wise God be glory forever through Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, it's right there. Paul was saying, listen, Phoebe, nobody hears about her in the Bible. The word of God says that Paul was saying, Phoebe, she was a deacon in the church. It said that help her. He's now saying, thank you for that, Harriet. He's now saying this woman has been such a help. He said anything that she needs, help her. She, he, he's saying, even a couple that was there, he's saying the Jews, he says, I'm now getting a better understanding about this, that this ain't got nothing to do with the law. He said, this has everything to do with serve the two. He's saying this ain't got nothing to do whether she got lipstick on or she got on jeans. This has nothing to do whether she has a husband or not. This has nothing to do whether they be Jew or Gentile. This has nothing to do whether she be a preacher or not. This has nothing to do with all of that stupid stuff that y'all trying to pin on folks and hold them hostage because... Perhaps you might be threatened. Perhaps 
You do want her to be silenced. Perhaps. And even Paul retracted this. The word of God said that. He said, Phoebe, my friend. He even named Jews that have even been more faithful in this walk than he has. Watch this. He even says, listen. He said, greet my dear. This young lady, Parissa. And other women who's worked very hard in the law, which means that these women were servants. So when a man tells you that you can't serve, take him to the book of Romans 16 and say, now explain that. The word of the Lord said that Jesus came and he came. No problem. Someone said, thank you for the truth. You go get it every time you click my button. You've got to understand that a man want to keep you bound. But if you're in the church and they tell you that you do not belong on a pulpit, walk out. Because what they're telling God is you cannot. I'm going to say that. Someone said this is deep. You're trying to tell the omnipresent, all-knowing God what he cannot do. You ain't got that kind of power, bro. Anytime you're in an organization or you're in the church and they're telling you that a woman can't, you're telling me that you're telling God what he cannot, cannot do. You are dictating God's power. Someone said, noted. You are dictating God's power. Perhaps that's why it's falling apart. Have you ever, someone said, they can't hear you in the back. Have you ever in your life seen so much division in the body of Christ over a woman preaching, over a woman being superintendent, over a woman having a position, and it was Mary Magdalene that God says, whether it was Mary Magdalene or not, y'all fight about that. I ain't got no time for that. I'm building a church. God said, go and tell, go proclaim the good news. That's what he said. That's what he said. You mean to tell me that you're going to forbid a woman to preach the gospel? For what purpose? So who are you to keep us bound by the law of tradition? Who are you? Who are you to do that? The word of God said that even Paul said it, but he said, wait, hold on. I got to retract that because I'm learned better now. I realized that. The, the, the Phoebe, Phoebe was my road dog. When 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 the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees threw me under the bus, it it was Phoebe, Phoebe. It was her, Phoebe, Phoebe held me down. And most of you have to understand if you know a tradition, if you know a religion to tell you women are not to be run fast, you're allowing them to keep you bound. You're allowing them to keep you bound. You're allowing them to keep you underneath a cross that God himself hung on to relinquish you of that stupidity. Who are you? Who are you? you I, I, I don't, I, and, and, and I'm, I'm going to say this. Um, I got a, 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 an engagement uh, to go preach at a church. And the first thing that Michelle said is she said, uh, it's traditional. And I said, decline it. I did. I don't care who you are. Decline it. I don't, I don't, someone said, thank you so much. Decline it. Decline it because, uh, hold on, I'm, I'm going to answer you because you over in Africa and I understand there's certain traditions and I'm reading the comments. I realize over in Africa, you guys, um, in, in, in your custom, in your tradition, you, you believe in certain things, which see, I'm underneath the dispensation of grace, which means that God's grace is so sufficient until he needed somebody like me. And so I said to Michelle, I said, I want you to please decline that offer because they're going to tell me what I can and cannot do. It's not that I'm rebellious. I, I, I know that the Lord is the redeemer and he redeemed me from that tradition. And so, no, I'm not going to come and have a skirt drag into the floor and I'm not going to come and I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to let them nail me to a cross that God died on already. Seriously. You have to understand. The Bible said, even Paul said, you know, the greatest among us is a servant. It's a servant. It, it's the servant. The servant is the one that ain't, it, it, it's not gender specific. It means that a man could serve and be great. A woman could be served.
serve and be great. A child can be serving and be great. An old person could be serving and be great. And God said, that's the greatest among you. It's the servant. So you mean to tell me that you're going against what God says when he said, the servant is the greater. Who are you to say that a woman can't serve? Watch this. The word of the Lord said this in Psalms 68 and 11. Put that up. Psalm 68 and 11. The Lord gives the word. The woman who announces the news, they are the great host. That's in the word of God. I didn't write that. I, it, it's right there. It's in Psalm 68. It says she's a great host. She's a great host. So you do have some customs. It's customary over in certain countries, over in certain legislations that a woman, she better not say nothing. That's why I don't live in Africa. I love it. I've been there several times and I go and I come home to Fred. They tell me you better hurry up and preach this message because I'm not going to allow people's custom to keep me bound. I have to let you know that Matthew 23 and 11 says is a great servant and she's a woman and God is saying, I need her. Women are so great until God himself needed the womb of Mary. My drop. And you cannot allow people's customs to keep you silent. If you're married to a man and he says, walk six feet behind me, you're in a, you're in a whole lot of trouble. And I know people saying I can't stand her because, you know, she's, she's just, she's just a feminist. No, I'm not a feminist. I'm a realist. My husband, he, listen, there are certain things that I ask my husband in reverence. I have a good husband. So in reverence, I ask him things specifically when I'm addressing single women. Because I asked my husband, because the word of God said, be concerned about the cares of my husband. So out of reverence, I say, Fred, can I, baby? And he says, yeah, sugar, you can. But I can't stand these crazy doctrines that tell you women are not allowed to do anything. But Usher, cook the baked chicken on Sundays. Take care of the babies. And that's all you good for. That, what? Explain Romans. I'm waiting. Explain Romans 16. Why did Paul say, look, this chick, Phoebe, this deacon, I ask you, here I go for my time. It said to receive her in the Lord, in the way that is worthy of his people and give her any help she needs from you. For she has been a benefactor of many people, including me, including who? including me, the one that said that women ought to be silenced in the church in 1 Timothy 2 and 12. He said, hold on now, I got to retract that. I got to retract that. He said, because this chick Phoebe, would you know, watch this, a more excellent way, hackers are on here, don't pay them no mind. When you know a more excellent way, when you know better, you do better. That's what happened to Paul. He said, when I know better, I do better. He was Saul. And God says, hold on, wait a minute. Hold on, wait a minute. He said, not because I know better, let me do better. He said, there's no male. He said, there's no jit. He said, there's no Jew. There's no Greek. There's no. Look, he said, the greatest among us is the servant. He said, all of us have a right. All of us. And so I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do. God says, I'm going to use those who will give me an opportunity to have their way in my life. And there are many women around the world and you can't do gospel without us, son. It can't. Fist pump to my ladies. You cannot do gospel without us. You can't. It's just like my husband. My husband, Apostle Fred D. Gooden III, he is in our new church working. He says, baby, hold us down. That's what I'm doing. That, 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 that's, that's, that's what I'm doing. And you got to understand that you got some leaders and they don't want you to say anything. And I'm going to say this. There are some men who are threatened by your anointing as a woman. Sure. You have to understand that if you read the word of God, there's so many women 
Deborah or Deborah, she was a prophet and she sit underneath the palm tree and she began to do what she had to do as a woman servant, as a mouthpiece of the most high. Her husband, Labadeth, or however you choose to say it, he understood. And he said, girl, you better do the work of the Lord, period. There's some husbands that understand that my wife has been chosen just like me. Watch this. But she understands that my spirit is subject to Fred. My spirit is subject to my husband. When Fred talk is just like E.F. Hutton. I'm listening. I'm subject to Fred. If Fred, right now, when I get off the phone with y'all doing Bible study, I'm going to cook his fish. I'm going to do that. I'm going to cook his fish because my spirit is subject to the authority. My husband is the authority. Not you, Bishop. Not you. My husband is. He's my pastor. He's the head of the household. He's the head of the church. My husband. And so you've got to understand the word of God said the wife is concerned with the things of the wife. The, the single ladies, you're concerned with the things of God. Pay attention. The enemy wants you to get distracted. 4,500 people pay attention. And God is saying, in this season, I'm raising up the women. There is a paradigm shift that is already happening, and it is concerned a movement of women. Now, I know you ain't like that part, period. Do the work. As Michelle said, you better do the work. You mean to tell me, read the story, read the word of God. In the word of God, God used a jackass. She said, hold on now. Did you just use the donkey to talk to me? Well, why is it that God can use a donkey, but he can't use me? I, I, I'm just confused. I don't understand. The word of God said that Paul was saying, wait a minute, hold on. Phoebe, I need you to receive her. That's what he said. He said, receive her. He said, even go all the way down to Romans 16 and 12. He said, I'm going to call her Trock. If I can't pronounce your name, you get your new name. He said, these young ladies, these two women who work hard in the what? Hard in the Lord. It's right here. This is the same man that said, listen, uh, uh, hold on now. First Timothy 2, I suffer a woman not to teach the, hold on now, but wait a minute, Phoebe, my girl, hold on, I got a new revelation of what I thought was right. See, the word of God said, I'll show you a more what? Excellent way. And he learned a more excellent way. He said, wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. Something ain't right. That's yours, law. The Lord came to set us free from that. And he said, now nah, there's no Greek, there's no Jew. He said, no, 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 there's no slave. We are all free. Free from what? Of course, free from the law. And now you mean to tell me it's 2021 and you still trying to hold me to the law? You're trying to hold me to tradition? Are you, you trying to do that? You're trying to do that. You, you, you're going against even what Paul said. Paul said, wait a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on. He said, now unto him who is able to establish you accordance with the gospel, the good news, the message I proclaim about Jesus Christ in keeping with revelation. That means I got the revelation knowledge. I got it now. Watch this. Of the mysteries hidden for long ages past. Hmm. He said, now I learned the mysteries of God from long ages past, but now revealed and made known through prophetic writing by the command of the eternal God. So that all the Gentiles may come to the obedience that comes in from faith. To the only wise God be glorified forever through Jesus Christ. So now he is saying, I got it. Eureka. I got the knowledge. I got the revelation. 
Women can teach. Women can preach. Women can work in the church. Women can do it. I am woman, hear me roar. If that's what you want to say. He's saying now, I got the knowledge. He says, I got to retract that. Because what I learned is God put me in the presence to understand that that law is not going to work. Watch this. When the Bible says that I've given every man a measure according to his faith, that means some faith that we got. God is saying the faith that some men don't got. Watch this. Your wife has to have because it said that the woman has the ability to sanctify her husband. You mean to tell me that I have the ability as a woman to sanctify my husband, but yet still I can't proclaim the good news of God? Hold on. That doesn't make sense to me. You see why I don't like religion? I don't like religion because religion will try to confuse you with the simplest things of God. You mean to tell me that I have the ability to sanctify my husband, but I can't tell the people about the good news of God? Someone said, come on here. It, 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 it doesn't make sense. I, 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 if y'all don't stop this foolishness, and the reason why it's so much division is because people lack understanding with all thy getting getting understanding and what happened to your boy Paul he got a complete understanding he got complete revelation and he said hold on now I gotta retract that that that, that, that doesn't make sense he said I, I I I now got the full knowledge it's nothing wrong with admitting you're wrong I do it every day I don't have a problem if some of these bishops you just need to admit you was wrong you you just admit you was wrong your God was wrong let me just appoint a, a, a female whatever it is that y'all doing over there and Koji just, just and God is saying wait a minute I'm doing a new thing here I'm doing a new thing here and some things will fall apart because you're going against what God says I said it it's right here it's right he said, I said it. He said, we all, all of us have a right to the tree of life. And you're prohibiting women to preach. You're, pro you're not giving them the ability to put, watch this. They got oil in the lamp, but you won't let them shine. Oh, my drop, that feel good. They got oil in their lamp, but you won't let them shine. That part. Yeah. They got oil in the lamp. But you won't let them shine. You're trying to tell God what he has the ability to do. And what he don't have. You, 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 you ain't that great. You ain't, you ain't grand. You ain't grand. You cannot tell God, look, you can't do that. You, you, you can't do it. The word of God said that. What he did. He said, I want to speak to those households. In Artabus, however you said, he said, he said, he said, greet the fellow Jews, greet them too. Do you know that they got a right to the tree of life too? Do you know that? Do you know that there are people who don't look like us that have a right to the tree of life? And God is saying, I need y'all to stop this foolishness because it's going to get hard because I'm doing something and you're trying to tell me how to do my job. Watch this. Paul came to complete understanding. He said, what I've got to do, watch this. Read the word of God. Read it in Romans. You can even go to Romans 15. Go to 15. Go to 15, 21. It says, rather as it is written, those who were not told about him will see. And those who have not heard will what? Understand. You're about to get an understanding. Yeah, you, you, you're going to get a complete understanding about what God is doing because what's going to happen is when you keep telling God what he can't do, he got to strip you because you think you know more than God. And then when he strips you and then he starts the paradigm shift and he replaces and it looked like a woman with a nice wig and some lashes and you say she ain't supposed to be there, God says, I'm doing a new thing. Don't tell me what to do. Don't tell me what to do. I am subject to my husband. You single ladies, I understand. Be subject to what the Lord tells you to do. If the Lord tells you to preach, you better preach. If the Lord tells you to teach, you better teach. If the Lord tells you to prophesy, you better do it. Y'all better do what God tells you to do. Someone said, you preaching good tonight. Y'all better do what God told you to do. And do you know there's some women right now, you got a headache? 
You sick. You busted, disgusted. You going through all of these problems because God told you to open your mouth and you underneath a tradition to tell you you better not say one word. You with, a, you with somebody that says, I'm not going to use you because you a woman. And God says, now who you going to believe, me or man? Well, this ain't going to get no better for you until you do what I tell you to do. And Paul said, wait a minute now. Hold on now. Hold on. We got to come together. We got to get an understanding about all this stuff. Because there was a man that I know that I love that hung on a tree. And he hung on a tree and we don't need the high priest. He hung on a tree and you know women can, y'all can vote. Y'all can be vice president. Y'all can be president. Y'all can do all those things that tradition tell you that you can't do. Y'all can do all those things. And you mean to tell me? They ain't going to like me today. Y'all may as well just go ahead and go to www.unitycharlottenc.org right now because they ain't going to like what I'm going to say. You mean to tell me that we can have a woman vice president, but the Koja can't get it together? The United Church of God can't get it together? Whatever organization y'all happen to be fighting over votes. You mean to tell me that there could be a woman in the White House, but it can't be in the church house? Because they didn't like what I just said, but it's okay. And so what God says is what, what I'm going to do, you keep doing that. He said, there's a paradigm shift and I'm going to use these women and they just going to surpass you while y'all still trying to fight and figure it out. And so I had to address it because it'd be so many people telling me, you a female pastor, you ain't supposed to preach, you ain't supposed to teach. And there's a man right now that's telling you, you, can, you don't even you don't even qualify. And God says, yes, you qualify. It's somebody telling you, you ain't good enough. Yes, you're good enough. Yes, it's International Women's Month. I get it. And I got permission from my fine black husband to teach this message tonight. You better do what God told you to do. Do what God told you to do. Do you know that there are women all over the world that silence and inside of you is a fire burning? And God says, I gave you that. But you going against what I told you to do. Now, mind you, I get it. You're trying to be obedient. But have you ever thought you might be disobedient to the wrong voice? Don't worry, I'm going to have a block party when I'm done. Have you ever said, I have got to do what God told me to do? I've got to say this. Don't worry, my husband will be doing part two next Wednesday. He's going to address the men. God says, you can't do this without her. There's a first lady right now. And God has said, you are like Noah. You're going to lead the people. You're going to set the captive free. And he says, you hear Sunday, sit down. And I get it. Because he your husband, you do what your husband say. But you better consult God. Your prayer is the Lord. Please deal with my husband's heart. That he may see the God in me. Watch this. That he may see the God in me. There's some husband that see the God in you. But refuse to see it because he always wants a wife. Lord help me how to deal with him. So there won't be. Someone said my God this is good. Lord help me how to deal with him. So that I can be the pastor. And I can be the wife at the same time. Because you are his wife. Lord, let me get them smothered pork chops. in the, Understand, and, and I'm going to just tell you as a wife. I'm going to speak to you as a wife now. Because I have all kind of people watching me. Even the replay. I'm a wife first to Fred. I'm a pastor, but he is my head. I'm dropping bars and I ain't even trying. You got to understand that my house got to be right before I get in the pulpit. You're right. When I get off here, I got to fry that fish. You're absolutely right. I got to tell me I love doing my wifely duties. Ow. But I'm a wife. I make sure that my house is in order because I am a wife first. I'm a wife first. You can't understand. You can't leave your husband and say, well, I'm just going to do what God told me to do. With all thy getting, get an understanding. And then when you do like Paul, what you do is you get an understanding about how you're going to run your house. You get an understanding that I know that God has chosen me to do something. 
But let's get an understanding how we execute that in which God has ordained me to preach the gospel or be the Sunday school teacher or whatever you've got to do. You have to understand that God chooses people all the time. Paul even knew that. He knew that because why would he come back and say, except Phoebe, accept her, give her what she needs because she's been faithful. Even she's been more faithful than even I have. Why would he say that? Why would he say that? You cannot do anything without us. We are a main factor of life as you know it. You need us. I believe that sometimes what happens in the body of Christ, we are so hell-bent on women being silenced until she will never say so. And something happens where fear grips us as women and we refuse to operate because we want peace in our home. I get it. You want peace in your life. I get it. But you have to obey God, don't you? So therefore, there has to be an understanding. And what is your prayer? Lord, help me to get an understanding. How am I supposed to do what you told me to do and be a good wife, be a good mother, work in the church? How am I supposed to do? It says with all that getting, getting an understanding. But it also said to all things decent and what? And in order. And you cannot have order being out of order. Let's get an understanding. How are you going to do this, Fred? How are we going to do this? Excuse me, if you're in the church and they tell you you can't preach here and God told you to preach the gospel, then you might have to leave. Because you're not being obedient to the voice that chose you. Remember, many are called, few are chosen, and some just up and went. What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? Did you say, I'm not going to do the will of God because of man? And then you get in trouble and then you say, oh, God, help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord, help me. He says, help you. The greatest among you is the servant. And I called you to serve. So help you. No, baby, you're supposed to be helping me. Me. I am Pastor Jamila Gooden, one of the pastors of UCI, Unity Church International. My husband is Apostle Fred D. Gooden III, and we are the senior pastors here. This is our virtual Bible studies. Hello. I am speaking to every woman and even some of you men. Obey God. Obey God. If you don't have a complete understanding of what God shows you to do, I suggest you get it. Because what you are doing is you are being out of order when God has called you to order. To order means I've chosen you to do something. Serve. And the greatest among you looks like me. She is a woman. The greatest among you is a man. The greatest among you is a teenager, is an elder. It's whoever the Lord says, I've chosen you to do a work. This man, Saul, had to be Paul and had to get a greater understanding of what he believed. And then he said, hold on now. I got an understanding of this now. Oh, hold on. I've seen some women work in the gospel. I've seen some powerful prophetesses. Prophetesses, however y'all say it, just say mouthpiece to me. He said, I've seen some powerful women in the gospel that a grown man silenced because he says she ain't supposed to do that because she's a woman. She ain't supposed to talk. She ain't supposed to do that. All things she's supposed to do is be quiet. You're a servant. And servants look like me. Servants wear bras. Servants wear bras. We do. Servants are people that God says, I called you to a greater calling than what man says you are. You are a servant. And Paul said the greatest among us is the servant. That's what it's about. It's not about a man. It's not about a woman. It's about a servant. Hold on. Let me retract that and let them go to Romans 16. Hold on. This girl served God. This is what it's about. I am Pastor Jamila, and I promise you, every time you click my button, I am going to tell you the truth. We are closing this Bible study because I got to go cook my husband's fish. We are the first rule of thumbs for giving. We are opening our church. We're going to ask you all tonight. I am going to start my offering off. This is mine with $500. That's me. I am the first 
giver. I don't care what you say. I am the first giver. That's me. I'm going to ask you all who are in leadership. Can you just start with $100? Do that. We are opening up the church on Easter. Yes, we need your help. Yes, we have things we've got to do. Go to www.unitychurchnc.org and there is where you give your offering tonight. I am telling you that God is in the work of this great paradigm shift and you are included in that. Please, if God has told you to do anything, if you're a woman, you better do it. If you're a man, you better do it. God said the greatest among us is the servant. This is what Paul said. He said, it's the servant and servants wear bras. Servants are women, men, old people. I don't care if he's 12. If God told him to do it, you better do it. God said that Paul had to get an understanding. Yes, he wrote Romans 16. Yes, he wrote Galatians 3. Yes, 1 Timothy 2. Paul said, wait a minute. I got a better understanding. And I know women are supposed to be silent. But hold on, I learned something about my girl Phoebe. He said, serve her. Her, for she is a deacon and she's done more than anybody. He said, what I realize now, it's about servitude. It ain't just about gender. It's about servitude. And if you a woman, you better do what God told you to do and serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with his thanksgiving. Know ye that he is God. It is he that has made you and not you are you yourself. You, hey Kimberly, you better do what God told you to do. Go to www.unitycharlottenc.org and I want you to please, your offering tonight, if you can do 50, do that. But I thank God for everyone who is part of this great ministry. Someone said I look beautiful. Well, guess what? Everyone on this timeline, I am going to say this without a problem. You are absolutely beautiful. You're beautiful because you allow God to use you. You're beautiful because you allow God to use you in a place where people said that women were not supposed to preach. Women are not supposed to teach. Women are not supposed to. Women are not supposed to. Yes, you are. Some of you are in trouble because you are afraid to do what God told you to do, do it. If you do what God told you to do, I am going to guarantee you, you are going to see a serious change in your life. You better be obedient because when you become obedient, what God will do, he will reward you for your obedience. I ain't got no time to be disobedient. I ain't got no time to be combative. I ain't got no time to be mad at folks. I am doing what God told me to do as a woman. I am warning you. Do it or pay the price. It says the wrath of God falls upon the children of disobedient. It didn't say the men of disobedient. It didn't say the women of disobedient. It didn't say the children of disobedient. It said the people, the people, all y'all who be in disobedient. You better do what God say. I am Pastor Jamela Gooden. And every time you come on this page, we're going to tell you the truth. Follow us because we're doing great things in the earth. Remember, we're opening up the church on Easter. I am going to announce who's going to be the speaker on Sunday, on Easter Sunday. But my girl, Miranda Curtis, will be with us on Saturday. You need your rest, bands. Come on out where we'll be cutting the ribbon on that Good Friday, having prayer, and come and have something to eat. God bless you. Until next time, our Bible study next week, I guarantee you, husband, to be here. And thank you, Fred, for serving the Lord with gladness. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.